I'm going to start a, a series because by the end of next week, hopefully, uh, I will have the uh, completed study uh, in book form on something known as Good Friday. Now, before we look at Good Friday, we uh, want to say that we have mentioned some of these things before. You have to understand that uh, in gathering all the material for uh, such, a, such a work and, and going to every single illustration and analogy does take some time and, uh, in order to put it together in a format so that people can start from point A and go to, to, to point Z and, and come out with the same understanding um, is an endeavor because we are inundated with religion. In fact, I believe that most of our culture, our, our society around the world uh, is driven by religion and merchandisers who cash in on religion. Now let's just think of it. Saint Valentine's Day, uh, that, is, uh, that is a religion. Uh, Cupid and Venus are, are phallic cult figures. They are idols that people look to. Uh, you've heard them uh, sing to Stupid Cupid. You've heard them sing to Venus, if you will, and so forth. Those are all idols. Uh, and, of course, the Bible says flee from idolatry. But then we come on down the line, and we have Fat Tuesday. Hmm, where is that in the Bible, that you can have a whole couple of weeks of debauchery ending in Fat Tuesday, where you can be immoral, drunken, gluttonous, do anything you want to, then all of a sudden you come to Ash Wednesday, which again, where is that in the scripture? Who, where do you find that? Of course, it's made up. Somebody made it up. Somebody said, hey, this would be a good thing to do to get people to come to church. Another gimmick. We just put ashes on their forehead. And for 40 days they are to replicate the sufferings of Christ in his 40-day fast. And you ask yourself the question, okay, they don't eat chocolate, but Jesus Christ didn't eat anything for 40 days. Doesn't seem to be a, an equality there, does it? You know, but, uh, or they give up whiskey in favor of beer or, you know, what all the other concoctions uh, uh, that, that people do. There is no such thing as a Lenten season, except as it's been made up in the minds of men. Somebody in a church said, I'm going to make this up. And so we have the Lenten season, a religious observance that, uh, that is not based on the Word of God. And then you come on down to things like Monday, Thursday, whatever in the world that is, Good Friday, Happy Saturday, I don't, I'm just naming that myself, you know, and then Easter. What is Easter? Easter comes from, it's an English der uh, 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 word that's derived from Ishtar, uh, who comes all the way back to Semiramis, and Semiramis, in a, whatever name you give her, it's the same idol, it's the same deity, rescued her son Tamu, went down to the netherworld and brought him back up in a resurrection. Guess what? That's Tamu. And Easter is Ishtar. Now, we know it as Resurrection Sunday. It's not Ishtar. It's not Easter. It's Resurrection Sunday. Uh, because when the minute we name, we, we must by way of convention, because half the time people don't know what you're talking about. You know, you could say something just like I'm saying here, and they would go right over their head or in one ear and out the other because they have the foggiest idea that there is no such thing as Easter in the Bible. It's Resurrection Sunday. We do not celebrate the resurrection of Tamu. We re and that's not the killer whale, by the way, in, uh, in marine land. That is an actual deity given birth by Semiramis and Nimrod. Whatever you name her, from, from Sybil to Venus to whatever, um, Aphrodite is the same deity. It's just branched out into different languages and different cultures and nations, made it up as they went. Now, let's continue on. We come to the fall of the year. If you're Jewish, it is um, Yom Kippur. It is Rosh Hashanah, it is Hanukkah. Uh, some of those are found in the scriptures. Uh, um, Hanukkah uh, uh, is uh, indirectly the, uh, the Feast of Dedication. But in this particular dispensation, guess what? We are not supposed to look at, quote, holy days, which is what a holiday is, uh, and be judged in light of them. It's not that you cannot remember them, but when people get all, uh, all um, uh, uh, upset if 
well, Easter is coming. And we just got to have it in a certain way because that is the way religion designates it. I, I get upset. You show me in the scripture where Paul says we're to be judged with respect to a holy day. Now, we can observe it fine, but when we get upset about the way it's supposed to be because some religion designates it, then I'm going to take issue. I'm sorry, beg your pardon. Uh, that's not the way it is. We're coming down the course of the year, and there's Halloween, there's All Souls Day, there's All Saints Day, uh, there's Christmas. And again, all of those things are concoctions of a certain religious organization and merchandisers to, to get people to come to church, give to church at those particular times, because they don't come any other time, <laughs> you know. Uh, the pastor says, says uh, goodbye, adore some people at Christmas, and I'll see you at Easter, because that's when they're coming back, because they just got to do it, because uh, it's, it's religion. You know, mom and dad always brought us to church uh, at Easter. We always got a new, new uh, pair of uh, pants and shoes and a new dress, and they showed it off at Easter. We didn't come back until Christmas time for the, for the kiddie Christmas pageant. And that's supposed to be meaningful. That's supposed to be something that, uh, that is substantial for life, isn't it? Uh, they, would, they would absolutely uh, corrode in their soul if they understood that the Word of God is, should be taken in systematically. It should, be, it should be today and tomorrow and this week and next week and faithfulness of the study of the Word of God and application to their lives. Because that's what true Christianity is. Everything else is either a false religion or, as we're, we contend, a corruption of true Bible Christianity. Now, that's where we are with Good Friday, you know, uh, and Easter, and we'll just mention Christmas. Where in the Bible does Santa, elves, reindeer, and, and all, all of this, uh, where do you find that in Scripture? It's not, it's concocted. Where in the Bible do you find a Resurrection Sunday as ducks and chicks and bunnies laying eggs and so forth? Where do you find that? You do not find it in the scripture. It's made up. So what I'm saying is, somebody's not telling the truth. Somebody has foisted a lie upon all of the world. It is not true. Now, one thing that is especially not true is that Jesus Christ died on a Friday. He did not die on Friday. He could not have died on Friday and fulfilled the scriptures. The scriptures say that he uh, died, was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures. And how many days between his death, burial, and resurrection was there supposed to be? Three full 24-hour periods. And you cannot get three full days if he died on Friday and rose again Sunday. Now, we have shown this a, a little bit. We, it's going to take us a little while to get there, but you've got to set some background because often people who are full of religion, not full of Christ, accurate Bible doctrine, don't understand. So we're, we're going to make these tapes. We're going to get this, this book out so that you can hand it to them and say, there it is. Good Friday is a farce. And those who worship on Good Friday with the whole Lenten shebang are nothing more than liars to the whole world. They're not telling the truth. And after all, salvation is the sanctification of the spirit and belief of the what? Truth. Uh, the truth shall do what? Set you free. What does it set you free of? Sin, but it also sets you free from corrupt religious observances that have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the Christian way of life, with salvation, with spirituality, or with anything related to the dispensation of grace. So, we first of all then are going to bring you to the fact that in the scriptures, there are certain periods of time that are actually named we're going to work backwards from our little chart here and note the kingdom. Daniel chapter 2 and verse number 44. Where it says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, it's decidedly Jewish, 
it shall break in pieces and consume all the other Gentile kingdoms, and it, that kingdom, shall stand forever. So, there is coming a time on this earth when Jesus Christ is going to have a li real, literal kingdom. Now, how do we know that? Uh, come with me to Luke chapter 1. Here's Christmas for you. Verse number 31. At the birth of Christ, or more accurately, at his conception, the angel Gabriel told Mary, you're going to conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. He'll be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, one other thing with regard to this kingdom, you have to understand the difference between a cardinal and an ordinal dispensation. Cardinally, this kingdom lasts 1,000 years. Eternally, this kingdom lasts forever on earth because that's where it is. There is another kingdom in the second heaven of which the body of Christ is, is a part of, and those thrones are uh, those on which we sit. Now, I mention that simply because the kingdom on earth is decidedly Jewish. Gentiles are saved according to the blood of the new covenant, but they must convert to Judaism. They must believe in Israel's God and in their way of salvation and form of worship. However, we live in the dispensation of grace. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. So, when we're talking about a dispensation, the Bible gives names to periods of time. This particular period of time is forever, cardinally, uh, excuse me, uh, is a thousand years cardinally and forever as far as eternity is uh, concerned. Okay, the period of time in which we live today is called grace. Chapter 3, verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me for, uh, to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. So this particular dispensation has several names. The mystery, uh, grace of God, the dispensation of the church, which is the body of Christ, wh whatever. We're living in that period of time when God is forming the second body of Christ, the church. And he is doing it by grace. And because no one knew it until it was revealed, it is a dispensation uh, of mystery. But the thing is, it is now revealed so that no one should be ignorant of it. But now, the two dispensations with which we want to deal today, because it's going to take us just a little bit of time to give, show you two analogies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ was in the grave 24 hours Thursday, 24 hours Friday, 24 hours Saturday, and rose again on Sunday, meaning he died on Wednesday. Now, it's irrefutable. If you, if you can come to me, even we're, and we won't be finished with this for a while, if you can come to me and show me if, if Jesus Christ fulfills the law accurately, then uh, if you can show me where somehow this is mistaken. Somehow God put these in here, but uh, it's, it's the way that other churches are worshiping. Then uh, I'll say, fine, you, if you prove it to me, you just show me. And I guarantee you, you cannot do it. It's irrefutable proof that Jesus Christ died on Wednesday and not Friday, and that certain religions are lying to us. They are not men of integrity. They are, they are making it up as they go. And uh, that, uh, that disturbs me because millions and millions of people are going to hell based on re a religion that is concocting celebrations, observances, ceremonies that are not found in Scripture, or if they are, they are corrupted, such as this one. All right? 
the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians, chapter 3. Verse number 16. Now to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. And he saith, and to seeds as of many, not to seeds as of many, but as one, thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, and that, we'll stop right there. That's the name of this next dispensation. What is it? The law. You know, people today do not understand as we go back to Reformed theology and Covenant theology and all of its uh, uh, aberrant forms, that they cannot go back and live under the law. They cannot go back and duplicate most of, of the life of Jesus Christ today because Jesus Christ lived, was born, and lived under the law. And therefore, they could say, we need to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because that's the life of Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were books written about the life of Christ who was born and raised and was lived and died and was resurrected under what dispensation? Dispensation of law. Jesus Christ uh, did not live under the dispensation of grace. Therefore, he had to observe all of the requirements, the restrictions, the ceremonies, the feasts of Jehovah, the new moons, the Sabbath days that the law required, and he did it perfectly. He didn't have one demerit against him. So the next dispensation here, the one that we are going to look at, that started on Thursday, April the 15th, now, you didn't know that I could, I could actually tell what day the dispensation of law started on, do you? I mean, not just the date, but the day of the week. And you can. And I'll show you. And I'll show you that, that uh, uh, some of the religious leaders that we have today have overlooked the Bible to their, to their own detriment, but mainly to the detriment of the people that they teach. Because the law started on the 15th of April. Now, uh, actually, the um, month is Abib, which goes between uh, our March and April because the Jewish months were only 30 days long. Uh, but still, generally speaking, that's why we say Easter is early this year. Easter is late this year. <laughs> why? Because they're, try they're trying to jostle this thing with a 30-day Jewish year. All right? So the next dispensation is law. We're going to look at that, when it started, and we're going to get a fantastic illustration about three, three days and three nights uh, when Israel was extricated, liberated from Egypt. But note, the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, verse 17, the law, which was 430 years after. Now that is a reference to promise. The two dispensations where we have the Bible not only naming them, but giving how long they were, are kingdom and promise. The four that are named are kingdom, grace, law, and promise. Kingdom is said to be a thousand years long cardinally. Promise is said to be 430 years long. Guess what? I'll take you to the date of when promise started. And I will give you the date and the day of when promise in, ended. It ended on April the 14th, a Wednesday, the day before that law started. Okay, now let's move on. 430 years after, cannot disannul that it uh, should make the promise of none effect. Let's go back now. Well, let's look at verse 18. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Okay, let's go from here then and look at the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 12. The 
book of Exodus, chapter 12. By the way, we're going to, uh, when I say these two, we're going to deal with law and promise. We're going to get another illustration out of the dispensation of promise that shows us that, that if typology is correct, and it is, Jesus Christ died and was in the grave three full days. Chapter 12, verse 1. This month shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Holding your place here, come to chapter 13 and verse 4. Here is the name of the month. This day came ye out in the month Abib. Now, you might notice that sometimes today uh, that any Jewish calendar will have uh, the word Nisan there. It has only one S rather than the, as the car. <laughs> uh, it's not a Nissan car or named after its invention at that time or what have you. But um, that's called a post-exilic name. Abib was its pre-exilic name. That's what they called it originally and this is what God called it. Abib was the month. All right, this was the first month of the year, according to chapter 12, verse 2. Now, speaking to the congregation of Israel, in the tenth day of this month, they'll take, this is in verse 3 of chapter 12, according to a lamb. Uh, and then they're going to, verse 16, keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall keep it, or excuse me, kill it in the evening. Now, what is this? This is the Lord's Passover. Uh, if you'll uh, come with me to, um, to uh, uh, verse number 27. You'll say it is, the uh, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt. Okay. Now, on the very next day of Passover, if that is the 14th, they were to kill it on the 14th. The very next day, they came out of Egypt, and uh, they were to mark that down. Note in verse number 40. Now, the sojourning of the children of Israel who, uh, who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. That is a reference to the length of the dispensation of promise. Now, if they're coming out at that time, 430 years later, and they're coming out on the 15th day of the month, Abib, the 15th day of the month started the dispensation of law. The 14th day of that month ended the dispensation of promise. That's what he's saying here. No, verse 41. It came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of, of Egypt. So Passover was the 14th of Abib, and they left Egypt on the 15th of Abib. Turn with me to Numbers chapter 28. Numbers chapter 28. And verse number 16. And that is exactly what is corroborated several times in Scripture. In the 14th day of the month is the Passover of the Lord, verse 17. And in the 15th day of this month is the feast. It's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Unleavened Bread shall be eaten. All right? So once again, it says, Passover, 14th. Unleavened bread, 15th. Kill the Passover, 14th. Uh, come out of Egypt, the 15th. Note Numbers chapter 33, just a couple chapters. Ch ch chapu's over. <laughs> mm -hmm. Verse 1. These are the journeys of the children of Israel which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies. 
under the hand of Moses and Aaron. Moses wrote their goings according to the journey by the commandment of the Lord. He wrote these things so that we would have a record of what went on, so that we could show these uh, corrupt theologians that they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection were according to the scriptures. And to say that it happened in parts of three days, or to say that it happened in three literal 24-hour periods, as miles apart, light years apart, as far as I am concerned, one, is, one of them is the truth. They both can't be the truth. You can't get three literal 24-hour days from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It has to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and raised again Sunday, or it's not true. And they are not telling us the truth. Verse number uh, three, and they departed from Ramses in the first month on the 15th day of the first month. On the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with a high hand uh, to all the, uh, in front of all the Egyptians. Okay, so what have we thus far? We're going to uh, show just a little bit, even more detailed, the days and how they fit in with regard to um, uh, the death of Jesus Christ. I believe that this first year for Israel set a precedent for the year in which Jesus died. And eventually that's where we will be. And you will be able to show other people that Jesus did not die on a Friday, but on a Wednesday. So what have we here before we change the screen? Four dispensations are literally named in the scriptures. Others are named uh, by men relative to the, uh, to the constituent, uh, uh, constituency of the revelation given at that time, which would be human government, um, uh, conscience, and innocence. But these four are named. Kingdom is said to be a thousand years long. Grace is uh, from uh, glorious appearing to glorious appearing, from Paul to the rapture. A law from uh, the giving of or the coming out of Egypt to the coming back of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ to establish his kingdom and then promise. Now, here's the thing. Note what we have read with regard to the uh, ending of promise. It says 433 years prior to this, the self same day. Guess what? If you go back 433 years to the self same day, when did promise start? The 15th of Abel, Abib. It started then, it ended the last day, the 14th of Abib, and the law started the 15th of Abib. Now, I cannot give you the day of the week that promise started. I can give you the day of the week when promise ended and when law began. You say, Pastor, that's a pretty, Pretty tall order. That's okay. We're going to do it. Exodus chapter 16. Now, God is going to show us beyond a shadow of a doubt when it was, what day of the week it was that the Passover was killed, what day of the week it was when the uh, uh, children of Israel left Egypt. You cannot get it any other way but the way that I'm going to give it to you. All righty? Unless, unless, of course, you twist and distort like the other three, uh, three allusions do. I'll tell you, this is... This is, this is a, a rough day. It's, you know what's, what makes it rough? is because er, everybody said, we have all been raised. Good Friday. Oh, but Good Friday and Easter are coming up. We've all been raised with that. And then some, some guy from the hills of Pennsylvania comes walking out and says, 
Repent, for there's no such thing as Good Friday. Gong, gong, gong. All of these people cannot be wrong. Yes, all of them are wrong, and I'll prove it to you. They are wrong. Religion is wrong. True Christianity is not a religion, but a relationship with Jesus Christ through faith and, and a walk with him through accurate Bible teaching. Do those who celebrate Good Friday walk in the light? They do not. Because the light says it was not Friday. Now, let me shed a little light on my statement. Verse 16, uh, verse uh, rather 1 in chapter 16. They took their journey from Elam. All the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing from the land of Egypt. How long had they been gone from Egypt? One month. This is the second month after they left. How do we know that it is one month? Because they left on the 15th of the first month, and they arrived in the wilderness here on, at the second month. On what day? They left on the 15th, and they arrived here on the 15th. Now, what is significant about this day? This day is a Sabbath day, as I'm going to show you, and it's going to set uh, uh, the precedent for us, the, the text which will prove beyond a doubt when these days occur. All right? Let's move on. You're, you're going to have to get a little quail and manna before you get, this is not Dan quail, by the way, but you're going to have to get a little quail and manna before we uh, move on here. Because I've got to tell you why we know what we know, and we're just about out of time for this hour. The whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. They said, Would to God uh, we had died in the, uh, by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we had flesh pots and bread and ate them to the full. You brought us forth to the wilderness to kill us, the whole assembly, with hunger. How can you imagine? They would rather live under slavery where their taskmasters fed them a little bit just to keep, to keep them alive for one reason. Why did Israel, uh, Egypt want Israel alive? To work for them, do their bidding. That's not exactly the highest calling in life. But uh, they would rather go back there because they thought, well, we're a little hungry and God hasn't provided. The Lord said to Moses, I will rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I might prove them whether they will walk in my law or not, or not. And it shall come to pass on the sixth day that they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Now please keep in mind what's going to happen here. God is going to begin a program of feeding Israel, meat at night, manna in the morning. He is going to start that program as soon as the 15th day has ended, and you'll remember, and we'll see this next hour, Israel's days started at 6 p.m. and went to 6 p.m. They do not start at midnight like uh, our days do. They start at 6 p.m. We'll see that next hour. So Moses said to all the children of Israel, just stay with me here, we're just about done. At evening, why did it have to be at evening? Because the 15th was a Saturday or a Sabbath day. And God is about to establish the Sabbath. And there was to be no gathering of food on the Sabbath. So he waited till six o'clock in the evening. And he said, at evening, you'll know that the Lord hath brought you forth from the hand of Egypt, land of Egypt. And in the morning, then you shall see the glory of the Lord. He's heard your murmurings. All right, let's move on down quickly. Saying to the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your murmurings. It will come to pass, uh, as Aaron spake to the whole congregation, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Verse 12, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At evening, starting tonight, the 15th, at 6 o'clock, you're going to eat flesh. Now, I don't know what the price of quail is going for. <laughs> You've always heard of, is it, uh, oh, that's pheasant under glass. That's not, uh, that's not quail. Uh, okay, different bird. Who cares? Um, it shall come to pass that even the quails came up and covered the camp. 
and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. Now, for the sake of our time, I'm afraid we're going to have to stop right there with, with this in your mind. On, it's actually the beginning of the 16th day. The Sabbath day ended at evening. Consistent with the pattern of not gathering food, God said you're going to have to wait till 6 o'clock. You're going to have to be hungry until 6 o'clock. I'm going to make you really want that quail by 6 o'clock. And so at 6 o'clock, God sent them quail. They slept all night, and in the morning, uh, they, they awakened, and they got manna. Now, this is going to, I'm going to show you from, from these how it sets the precedent uh, of the next week and how we know this was a Sabbath day and how we know uh, the accuracy of our chart. But because I see my time is up, we better quit now.